Democrats have had a field day with your seeming unwillingness to come out and say where you stand on the Ryan plan completely. And so I'm going to ask you as direct a question as I can. You can ask for the Democrats. <laughs> yeah, they like playing politics. Well, uh, would you vote yes or no? And it's not just Democrats that are coming after it. You're Republican yeah, primary yeah, yeah, opponents. Yeah, I understand the politics right. of it. So, but would you vote yes or no? And why are you unwilling to say whether or not you vote yes or no? Because I have my own plan, which I think is a good blueprint. And I've commended Congressman Ryan on his plan. And in fact, some of the things that he has uh, proposed are, are consistent with what I've advocated a long time, and that is giving flexibility to the states on, on Medicaid. And that's similar to what we did while I was governor on welfare reform, and that's can sa that can save us a lot of money. And I look at the states as laboratories of innovation and, and democracy, and I think the states could come up with some good ideas in that respect. Uh, Congressman Ryan also has the aspect of it of reducing the taxes on job creating businesses, and that's fine. I'd, I'd like to have a 20% uh, rate as opposed to 25 percent. And so far as uh, Medicare is concerned, I, it, it, people need to understand what the situation is with Medicare. The, the taxes and premiums that fund the Medicare program make up a little over half of the cost of the program. So there's going to need to be changes made if we want to preserve Medicare, which I want to do for current and, and future uh, recipients of Medicare. The one place where I think we could find agreement, hopefully on a bipartisan basis, is that $50 billion every year is wasted on fraudulent payments in Medicare. Now that ought to be stopped. That's half a billion dollars over a 10-year period. As far as the other aspects of it, I think you ought to be open to a variety of ideas that will be coming forward and discuss them with the American people. Most people aren't familiar with any of these proposals right now, and I think that the first step, though, that we ought to take is rooting out this $50 billion that's wasted every year on fraudulent claims. The, for the Democrats to carry on about this, though, is so disingenuous. If they don't like Ryan's plan, if they don't like my plan or anybody else's plan of action, come up with something. They have not even passed a budget for over two years. It is a height of hypocrisy but and, a height, and a height of irresponsibility to be criticizing anybody's plans when they don't have any of their own. And I, and I will admit readily that there's no doubt that the Democrats are the ones that are trying to pin you down on a yes or no vote on this. Yeah, and they but want to do it for, I understand their political things. Your Republican but I think primary opponent has also come out strongly, Jamie Radke, saying that she would vote yes. And Congressman Cantor said a couple of days ago that any candidate for the U.S. Senate should get behind the plan. Isn't it fair to say that while you do readily admit there are parts of the plan that you would support, but that you can't support the plan in its entirety, that if it was put before you uh, as a vote in the U.S. Senate that you vote no? I'm not going to tell. I'm telling you what I'm for, and by the and if the people of Virginia hire me on to fight for them and their values in the United States Senate, they can look at our blueprint, the pro-growth approach. It is a way of getting to a balanced budget. It's a way of of not just looking at where you make cuts, but here are some positive ideas that are a pro-growth approach that'll get more revenues in, and all of that will would would in many respects make our budget obviously balanced. Moreover, it would take off some of the pressure and cuts that would have to be made in some areas that we think are important. So uh, there's people look at things different ways. I look at it, if people want to know how Georgia Allen believes we need to, to get an American comeback, it is based on, on competitive tax policies, unleashing our American energy resources, reining in uh, the regulators at the federal government, and looking at logical ways that I think most people on a bipartisan or tripartisan basis would be able to say, all right, that makes sense, let's get that done. And as far as the reforms, yes, there's going to need to be reforms made clearly in Medicaid, which is the biggest cost driver, and there's going to need to be reforms made in Medicare because there's no way that it's going to be sustainable with the way it's going now. But I'm actually, I'm actually one who's been saying that the people of Virginia and their voices have been ignored. I think we as Republicans ought to listen to the people, share share with them, here's the situation Medicare is in, and then discuss, have a conversation. Well, do you think that Newt Gingrich is right when he says in the debate the other day that Congressman Ryan is having a hard time getting through to the I'm, people? I'm, I'm not going to get into debates between somebody right. who's running for, for president and Congressman Ryan. I commend Congress, Congressman Ryan, and I, I think he has a very thoughtful plan, and I think it's I think it's something worthy of consideration, not demonization. I'm not going to criticize this plan. I think that my ideas, I'm running my campaign. I'm not going to have others. Uh, my campaign's for the people of Virginia, 
I like my ideas. And to the extent that they merge in with others, that's good. And I think what Paul Ryan ought to be commended for is at least starting a debate. And for those who say, well, is there a better way of doing it, or can this be tweaked one way or another? I think that's all very constructive and absolutely necessary for the future. The one thing, again, that everyone ought to be able to agree on as far as the solvency of Medicare is root out that $50 billion that is expended and wasted every single year on but fraudulent but claims. But why why not a, do that? Here's a, this, I'm not going to continue to hammer you on it, uh, but this is my last question on this topic. Everywhere you go, at least for the next, probably up until the primary, you're going to have people just like me trying to pin you down on a yes or no vote. It's the way the political narrative has gone. Are you, are you afraid that it could be something that could weigh down the campaign where you're going to constantly, everywhere you go, be asked about this? You're going to probably have Democratic trackers yelling at you in the background. And just you know, from a frank political discussion, are you concerned at all that if you continue, and I, I do understand your point, and I see where you come from a genuine perspective on this, and I understand how it can be manipulated, uh, but are you afraid if you don't come out and say yes or no? Because as a U.S. Senator, you would have to vote yes or no. Yeah, I'm not a U.S. Senator. If I were a right. U.S. Senator, yes, I, I would vote yes or no on yeah. it, obviously. Um, I think that, that, that it's an important issue. There are other important issues. And I think what I hear from most people, you may get certain things from reporters, and you do represent to some extent some of the same questions you hear, sometimes not, <laughs> from, from people. And, and most people that I listen to and hear uh, have a lot of frustration with Washington. They're very concerned. Gas prices is, is a big issue for people. Jobs is a major concern for folks. There are many people who are worried about losing their homes. There's others where, where the falling prices of houses, that they're, they're actually their mortgage is higher than the value of their homes. There are people who are concerned about their children and their future. And those are the, those are the big issues. Some of the details on, on, on Medicare or Medicaid those two programs, most people aren't all that conversant on, on either Medicaid or Medicare. And so I think it's very important in the course of this campaign to do have a conversation, a discussion with the people of Virginia on Medicaid, let them know how this health care welfare can be turned around because what's happening right now, while somebody may not be on Medicaid, uh, the fact that the enrollment and eligibility is being expanded and means that a state has less funding for higher education, which translates into higher college tuition costs. So that's how it affects families. On Medicare, I think it's very important for folks to understand that the premiums and taxes that are devoted to the Medicare program right now are paying over only over a little more than half of it. So if we want to preserve it, what are the different solutions? And I think there ought to be a discussion of the solutions. Paul Ryan's part plan is, is fine for part of the discussion. There are many others that we ought to, to look at as well. The one thing, though, where I try to unite people is, hey, I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent, don't you think we ought to stop wasting $50 billion a year on fraudulent claims? No one ought to be fussing on that, and let's get that done. That'll help the solvency of